I, I had met some of these older artists, but it was I was always in this kind of reverential position, you know, where I wasn't their peer, you know, I was a young man uh, who, you know, like you, get on the phone, call somebody, you know, I'd say, you know, um, I'm John Zinzer, and I'm editor of this new art magazine, Journal of Contemporary Art. We made up this name that sounded, you know, historically significant. And, you know, it is amazing that, that, that that's all the entree you need. I mean, that's the great thing about the art community as opposed to academic community, etc. Um, people are ready, willing, and able to try to, uh, you know, explain what they do and so forth, particularly if you have a project like this one. So, I was, my own work was developing, but I didn't have an immediate peer group. You know, so many artists have people either from school or socially who are their friends, and then there's a kind of collective energy that moves you forward. I was still the deferential young man trying to figure out what to do. And I was going around to galleries, and there was a little gallery in Soho on Sullivan Street, Julian Preto Gallery. And for people who know Julian Preto, he was a real character. Um, and sadly, he died of AIDS in the 90s. But um, he was a bridge figure between Soho and Tribeca of the 1970s and the generation that I was about to become a part of, which was emerging at the end of the 80s and the 90s. Daniel Levine, who you're seeing later today, was a Julian Preto artist at the same time I was there. We were part of the younger generation. But Julian had been a director at Speroni Westwater Fisher. Before Speroni Westwater was just Speroni Westwater, they were partners with um, Conrad Fisher, who had a very important gallery in Germany. Uh, and Conrad Fisher was the primary German dealer for Carl Andre and Saul LeWitt and a lot of New York 1970s kind of minimalist artists and Julian had befriended those artists at that time but he was in a tiny storefront space on Sullivan Street and he loved these small galleries over the years he had a number of them around 6th Avenue, McDougal Street, Sullivan Street and one of the things Julian loves to do is give young artists a first show that was for him an honor and uh, a distinction and he had a great eye um, but what he was interested in was uh, reductive painting, monochrome painting, among artists of an older generation at the time when I was going around to see the gallery. Uh, Marsha Hafif showed there, Phil Sims showed there, um, trying to think of some of the other painters, Bob Yasuda, Robert Yasuda, um, Merrill Wagner. Uh, so very much uh, a specific kind of generation and I didn't know these artists or their work very well but I was interested in some of the younger artists that he was showing and those would include an artist named Tom Brazelton who also died of AIDS in the 90s but was very influential to me. He worked with dispersing dry pigment and polyurethane and so the specific process, specific nature of his work really attracted me and the idea that process-specific methodologies could lead to a kind of imagery also really appealed to me. So I would go in and kind of strike up conversations with Julian, and I said, well, you know, I make paintings, and he was always like, okay, young man, whatever. And I sometimes joke that the reason I got into the gallery was because my, my slides were so bad that they, they appeared overly dark, and you couldn't really read how graphically active the paintings were. And they looked more monochrome than they were. Uh, I don't know if that was the case, or probably it was more that Julian had a kind of um, intuition uh, about who somebody was. And the way I was looking at things appealed to him. But my work really hadn't had much of a chance to develop. I've been working seriously for two or three years on my paintings. Uh, and that was when I went to talk to Julian. So I hadn't gone through graduate program, struggled in the trenches for years, etc. Rather, Julian said, you know, let's schedule a show. Um, I had had one previous opportunity to exhibit 
in a group show at White Columns. And again, 87, which is when that happened, Bill Arning was the director of White Columns, and he was tremendously important for my generation because he did all the legwork of going to see every artist in their studios and also was able to connect people. He'd say, you should meet so-and-so or you should meet so-and-so. You're doing something that relates to so-and-so. He was able to make these connections because he had a kind of omnivorous eye and appetite and energy. And so uh, I met David Dupuis through him. David Dupuis and I were in that show together, Gail Fitzgerald. Um, but when I started showing with Julian, I did my first solo show with him in 1988. It was very early in my own personal development, and I was still quite young. I was in my, my 20s still. So as far as direct influence, I was kind of influenced by the context of the gallery and thinking, how does what I do, or how, does what I, how can what I do relate to the other artists in this gallery context? 